I've seen a lot of videos talking about the potential NMN ban lately, and I thought this was a good time to talk about my thoughts on NMN and also on David Sinclair. First off, simple niacin will raise your NAD. I've seen many sources saying it will not do so, but this is incorrect. You can read the study yourself and see that not only does NAD go up in the elderly when they are given niacin, but they show improvement on very important aging markers such as grip strength tests. Now it would be pretty ridiculous to think otherwise because NAD is made in the body from niacin in the first place, so the idea you can't absorb it, as I have heard people like David Sinclair say, is very questionable. It could theoretically be possible taking extra would not work in practice to raise levels of NAD for some reason. But science is really about measurement, and this is an experiment that's been done and measured many, many times, so we know that's not the case. So even if NMN is banned, it's not the end of the world. They have even banned niacin in the UK, but in more reasonable countries, niacin is about as cheap as sand. And unlike NMN, it lasts essentially forever so long as you keep it dry. So if you run out and grab a few kilos tomorrow, you're probably set for life. And it'll probably cost you less than 100 bucks, which won't even get you 100 grams of NMN. I still have a bunch of NMN left over, and I only use small amounts at a time. But it's pretty expensive. At the time, it was about $1,500 a kilo at the very cheapest place that you could get it. I've also seen many experts totally mystified as to why we lose NAD as we age, even though they are channels that claim to be science channels, or a science show, like one channel, and they allegedly have scientists running them. They'll tell you about the CD38 enzyme and why it's supposedly bad, and about macrophages and senescent cells and on and on. What they don't tell you because they don't know is the root cause. Macrophages can only fight pathogens or repair cellular damage. It's an either or proposition, and as we get older more and more of our macrophages are set to fight pathogens that infiltrate the body through the gut, that is, they are M1 state macrophages instead of M2 state macrophages which induce phagocytosis. When they do fight them, they trigger the CD38 enzyme, which consumes large amounts of NAD, essentially energy, to create chemicals and to destroy pathogens. As we age more and more of this occurs, it's a double whammy because not only is our immune system not repairing the cells, it's draining the whole body of its most important currency. And this means that on a cellular level, we're not getting as much repair going on. Thankfully, when you trigger oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria of the macrophage, it switches back into repair mode and switches from the M1 disease fighting state to the M2 repair state, where it'll actually go and eat up senescent cells and other unwanted material that are causing problems. Things like fasting and phototherapy can do this very quickly. It's not a bad idea to supplement niacin or NMN to help the body along, but if you can go after the root cause, then you probably are going to have much better results. But don't take my word for it, or that of some other YouTube personality. First off, I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> You can hear it from leading phototherapy researcher, Professor Hamblin. Now the mechanisms, there's quite a few different mechanisms. The main mechanism revolves around the mitochondria. So the uh, cytochrome C oxidase, which is unit four in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, is accepted as a chromophore for red and near infrared light. And the idea is that you get more oxygen consumption, more ATP, the mitochondrial membrane potential goes up. Um, other things happen, but one important thing is that the mitochondrial metabolism switches from glycolysis back towards oxidative phosphorylation, which is important because it has a few 
um, effects on the, on the whole metabolism. Um, you get a lot of signaling happens based on this mitochondrial activity. You get uh, nitric oxide released, you get ATP and cyclic AMP, you get a brief burst of reactive oxygen species. These activate transcription factors, so June FOS is AP1, um, I kappa B allows NF kappa B to go to the nucleus, and these transcription factors can trigger the expression of over a hundred different genes, which is a long-lasting effect. So these proteins that are triggered by this, these transcription factors will last for hours, days, and even weeks. So a single exposure to light can have long-lasting effects. As I said, this switch of glycolysis to oxidative phosphorylation is important for two reasons. One is that stem cells are activated stem cells in their hypoxic niche carry out glycolysis but when the mitochondria are activated they need oxygen so they have to get out of their niche when they can undergo proliferation and differentiation programs the second effect of this glycolysis to oxfos switch is anti-inflammatory so macrophages have an m1 phenotype and a pro-inflammatory carry out glycolysis when oxfos is activated, they switch to the M2 anti-inflammatory phenotype. And if these happen to be microglia in the brain, they can undergo phagocytosis, for instance, disposing of amyloid plaque that clogs up the brain. Exercise also has the same effect to some extent, but the elderly typically have many issues with exercising such as bone spurs, arthritis, and reliance on blood thinners, which is something that almost makes it impossible to exercise. You can also get some of this effect from diet that provokes less insulin response and from other interventions as well. In fact, I've come to the point where when I wanna see if something is healthy or not, one of the first things I look at is whether it affects oxidative phosphorylation in some way. And it's amazing how many of the things like exercise and diet will affect oxidative phosphorylation. Everything that actually makes you healthy seems to be something that has an effect on it. Though there's many other mechanisms too. I'm not going to go into everything that can make you healthier. Everything fasting does, everything phototherapy does. You know, that's not to say David Sinclair's research isn't very important or that he has not done a lot to bring awareness to this aging pathway because he has done a lot. But of course he's going to try and promote the substance he discovered over some other mechanism of action. And if Inamin did become a drug and was pushed as hard as statins are today, then that would be a great outcome, but that's never going to happen. The government doesn't want life extension and will likely never approve a drug that treats it because paying pensions and medical care for the elderly is already an almost impossible task. These won't really extend life anyway, the data so far is pretty clear on that. In every mouse or primate study on life extension mechanisms, none of them break the upper bounds of species lifespan, you just have fewer specimens dying off very early on in their life. So it almost certainly really is a health booster that prevents things like cancer and other diseases. It's not really a life extender, but at the same time, that's probably what we really want anyway. We don't want to be really old and really, really sick. That doesn't really make any sense. Discovering the CERT-1 cellular repair mechanism in resveratrol is another big discovery by Sinclair's lab, but even more caution should be applied here. First off, olive oil is a CERT-1 activator, just like resveratrol is. So you can skip resveratrol completely and just add a tablespoon of olive oil to your diet and get the same or possibly even better results. And nothing limits you to one tablespoon. You can replace all of your fat with olive oil except for a small amount of EPA and DHA and you're going to have amazing effects as far as cardiovascular health goes. You also see in resveratrol studies that as the dose goes up, you see extremely negative side effects, such as death. <laughs> this makes sense because it seems to work on the hormetic effect, 
Your body sees a mild poison and this triggers your cellular repair mechanisms. Which is fine so long as the poison really is mild. Resveratrol seems to be a rather strong poison and taking the doses that provides maximum effect is probably a really bad idea. You should probably only take smaller doses and I personally just skip it because olive oil shows the benefits without the negative effects and there's many other things that potentially have benefits that don't have negative effects so why take something that does? Just keep in mind with Sinclair that the guy doesn't do and say the things he does as a charity. He also promotes many outdated ideas like caloric restriction and avoiding red meat that just don't scientifically pan out. Now we know that fasting has many times the effect of caloric restriction without all the horrible drawbacks like sarcopenia, which is actually one of the very worst things in aging that is a big predictor of dying early. Attacks on saturated fat and dietary cholesterol are now completely debunked. It's just pure nonsense made up by Ansel Keys with zero factual support. There's literally nothing out there to support that. Most anti-aging channels basically worship this guy and take everything he says without any skepticism at all. But you should always be skeptical. Not close-minded and impervious to logic like the typical self-styled debunker you'll see on YouTube. But try to keep objective and logical, which is what being skeptical is really about. Most of them also offer discount codes for websites that sell NMN. So this is something to keep in mind. It doesn't mean that the person is totally dishonest, but it does call objectivity into question. If I get a dollar for every hour you fast, well then of course I'm going to promote fasting to you. Of course, I don't. <laughs> fasting is pretty much the only thing out there that's guaranteed to always be free. And not only that, it'll save you lots of money. And there's no real way for people to profit off of it, at least not directly.